Right. So uh, in last session, we discussed about the guideware part, as we all know. Uh, now, today I'm going to discuss about from the architectural point of view, because being a architect, right, working on guideware applications, especially as a guideware architect, it's always important for us to understand about the migration planning, because being into the architect roles, especially an individual when we are working as a guideware architect, it's always important for us to have an enterprise architectural framework, something like TOGAF and all everything are mandatory because even in the last session I told you, because if you want to become an architect, especially like uh, there are different frameworks like TOGAF enterprise architecture framework and all everything are needed. The same thing even applicable, even though we are working for applications, something like guideware and all that. So whenever being into the TOGAF, understanding over the TOGAF in context to the uh, migration planning, because when it comes to the migration planning, wherein we are migrating from old legacy systems to the new application. In this context, it's always important for us to understand about multiple phases in this. There are different, different phases where we need to implement a migration plan. I'm talking about project migration from old legacy migration up to old legacy systems to new guideware application, all that. This is all comes under the implementation of migration planning, all that. At the same time, we need to create an architectural roadmap, whatever the roadmap is required for his implement and all, right? Architectural roadmap creation is something which we have to be created. At the same time, whatever the requirements which are important for this particular architecture to develop, whatever are required and whatever are needed to initiate this roadmap, this is also important. That is the third phase. Next, we need to understand about architectural definition document means what all the different different definitions do we have, right? Architectural definition document is important. And what kind of implementation governance model is required? So when we are implementing insurance applications, guideware insurance applications is all needed. Finally, of course, architectural building blocks and all repositories will be maintained. That is different. Now, today I'm going to discuss about the migration planning, right? So what are the steps you require to follow when you are moving from old mainframe application? Let's say an insurance company is using old my, my, my legacy application, right? So for policy management, building claims and all. Now they are moving from old legacy applications to the new, uh, new guideware application. And do remember, guideware is an application which was already built. According to the business rules and government mandates, which we have to make some changes out of it. In this regard, it's always important for us to understand the migration process. So whenever we try to understand about the migration process, this is where generally the first step where we have to implement a migration planning. Because migration planning, wherein we need to understand the existing uh, database or the data, right? So which uh, I'm talking about the policy data, right? So policy records of the customers. All these things can be identified, has to be identified in the old legacy systems. Now, when you want to move into the new application, whenever you want to identify and develop a migration planning process for implementation perspective, it's always important for us to know about uh, uh, what kind of file formats you want to use it because normally different file formats, something like XML, JSON, right? So different, different file formats are we using nowadays so that we need to create an implementation uh, migration plan report is what something which we have to be performed in the beginning. This is the first thing you have to do it. Next, once we have identified the migration planning process, implementation of the migration planning process and all that, so we need to create an architectural roadmap, whatever the implementation of the solution you want to develop for a particular application when we are going for configurations or migrations, all that. It's always important for us to create an architectural roadmap. So when you are going to create any architectural roadmap, it's always important for us to understand the kind of factors because this is where generally gap analysis comes into picture. So gap analysis means right from existing to proposed system, whatever the gaps were identified between as is and to be is called gap analysis, followed by the kind of factors which are implemented in it. What are the, those factors can be functional factors, it can be in 
regulatory factors, it can be technical factors, it can be an operational factors, or it can be policy related factors and all, right? So those are all will be there. So that roadmap, when we are creating an architectural roadmap, when we are migrating from old legacy systems to the new guideware application, it's always important for us to understand about what are the factors which are implemented and how to consolidate the gaps is the first step you have to follow. Next, why once we have identified the factors of consolidation, the gaps and all everything, we must able in a position to understand about the work breakdown structure. Because when we are endorsing the responsibilities to the team to perform these things well in advance, it's always important for us to create a work breakdown structure about the kind of rules and responsibilities, rules and regulations, everything comes under this category, right? So that we will be knowing about the work breakdown structure, how to create the work and how to break the works, etc., is what something which we have to be performed in this regard. So once we are confirming the work breakdown structure, the next is about confirming the transition for architectural definition, because how to transit from old legacy systems to the new application. The transition of architecture is what something which we have to be decided in this regard. Next, we need to determine the dependencies among the work packages. Means what are the different different dependencies do we have? Because dependency can be a technical dependency or it can be a regulatory dependencies and all. Right. So all these things are comes under the architectural roadmap. Being an architect, guideware architect, one has to be known with. Next, once the architectural roadmap, the next is about the requirement specification. Normally, these requirement specifications and whatever the requirements are we talking about, right? So these requirement specification, these will be taken care of from the business analyst. Normally, these requirements will be given by the BA because when we are going for migration of the projects, what kind of requirements to be added, what kind of requirements to be initiated so far, those requirements will be given by architects. So architectural requirement specification comes under the third level, means whatever the requirements customer is giving. So the architectural requirement specification will be taken care of by the architect here. This is what something will be done over here. So once the requirements were taken and all, next we need to identify the architectural definition document. Normal architectural definition document, my advice to you, it's always important for us to learn being a guideware architect, it's important for us to learn about architectural definition document by us in person. Because either it can be starting with from high level designs or low level designs. At the same time, in the low level designs, whatever the kind of programs are you going to write, if there is any kind of discrepancies or mistakes were identified, what are the different different design patterns to be used? All these things are comes under the architectural definition document, which has to be created in here. So my advice to you, when we, of course, in the coming sessions, I'm going to discuss with you, right? How the architectural definition documents and all everything will be created. So this architectural definition document is all something being an architect, if you are learning will be more ad advantageous because knowing about high level designs and no level designs by understanding the non-functional requirements, which was identified and created by the business analyst. That's what something we have to do. So there is a clear uh, connect between BA to architect roles. Because whatever the non-functional requirements identified by the BA, that's where generally we implemented by a architect when they are providing any solution architecture for the project, right? So architectural definition document is what something which we have to create. Next, we need to identify and implement the governance model or governance structure. Because governance structure majorly lies upon the policies, procedures, standards, whatever are required for us to follow. This is all comes under the implementation of the governance model. What are the governance structure we have? Governance policies, procedures, right? So all these things are comes under the governance model over here. So once we have identified the governance model, we need to identify and create architectural building blocks because these building blocks may be varied from one application to another application. It depends on the requirements, what we have taken and all, whatever the building blocks to be identified. Everything will be taken into consideration after the governance model and all. Next, we have to store the data. Either it can be policy data or billing or claims data, which has to be stored at some repository. For that, it's always important for us to create some architectural repository. So if you want to create architectural repository or if you want to store any kind of coding and all everything, generally GitHub is also important because GitHub is a code repository system where whatever the piece of code written by the projects, right? So either by the developer 
whatever the code was written by the developers and all, everything will be stored in this. This is where generally architectural repository comes into picture. So managing the repositories and connecting the repositories is what something being an architect one has to be known with. Next, we need to identify the kind of business user contacts, right? So because whatever the contracts which we are initiating with the business users, users nothing but I'm talking about application users, whoever are using the guideware application. So we need to understand about architectural contract with the business users and all. Finally, these architectural uh, contacts and all everything, wherein this will be conver converted into the development partners because if there is any kind of changes you want to make and all everything. So before you are going to accept the change request, before that, okay? So we need to create and we need to develop a contract with the uh, development partners and all everything. So once it is done, the next is about if there is any kind of, this is optional, I can say, because if there is any kind of change request initiation was made by us, or if you are developing anything, right? So if you want to make any kind of changes and all everything in this regard, so this change request initiation will be taken, which is optional, depends on the requirement to requirement. This is all something different from one to another. So these are the different, different stages are there whenever we are working on migration planning. Being an architect, we have to implement whenever we are working on uh, guideware architect role. Okay, this is something essentially useful for that reason and understanding about enterprise architecture and understanding uh, having a detailed understanding over TOGAF framework is one of the key responsibility. So after, of course, when it comes to the TOGAF framework and all, there are different, different architectural development methods are there. Migration planning is one kind of, but before that architectural vision is there, right? So architecture process is there, right? So there are different, different stages are there. And that's what we call it as TOGAF ADM principles are that I'm going to discuss uh, the principles one by one in tomorrow's session, okay? Okay then, see you.